okay hello everyone this is victor momo from excel moments and in this video i want to continue on you know recurrence patterns uh, for you know outlook meetings but setting this up from excel vba in the first video on recurrence patterns which is definitely a prerequisite to this one i talked about you know setting up meetings that occur um, daily and weekly as you can see you still have the weekly here so what i want to do now is talk about two more which is um, setting up a meeting that occurs reoccurs monthly and the meeting that reoccurs you know yearly and one thing you need to be aware of is that not all properties you know for the recurrence patterns you know as in cut across all the various types of recurrence so not everything works for daily and weekly monthly yearly and you know end monthly and end yearly yeah? so some of those nuances are what i'll be pointing out to you so let me first of all change this now to monthly i want to set up this is monthly okay right so now pattern start date i still want it to start on you know the um, 11th of april uh, the day of the week mask doesn't work for, you know, the monthly. So you don't need that here because for the monthly meetings, it's like saying it occurs on a certain day in the month, right? So it doesn't use the day of the week. So you don't need this, okay? If you say the interval should be two, that means it's going to occur not every month, but it's going to occur after every two months. That's the idea here. The other things I think are fine. You can leave your occurrences if you feel this is a lot. We could, you know, drop this and say, let's let it occur, like, say, uh, 50 times. Okay, that's fine. Now, this should be good, but I want you to notice something when we run this, okay? And see what day of the month Excel and Outlook decide to use based on what we've set up. So, just click play here. So, now it has set this up. It now says it occurs on day 9. Day 9 because today's date is actually 9th of April. Although I had said that my recurrence pattern should start on the 11th, you must have noticed that, right? So I said my recurrence should start on the 11th, but because today is 9th, it's automatically selected 9th. And what this would mean is that the meeting will happen, like it says, on the 9th of every, you know, two months, effective from 2021 to 2029. That's the 50 occurrences. Okay. So now I don't want it to occur on the 9th because now it's just picking the default based on my current date. So what I can do is now to use a property which is called the day of month. Okay, so when you see, you see day of month. So the day of month allows you to specify what day of the month you want this to happen. So I can say day of month, I want this to happen. Even though I'm starting maybe my meeting on the 11th, I could say I want this to happen on the 15th. So this way, it's going to happen on the 15th of every two months. Okay, and that's really what I want. So let's just run this. Nothing special. Okay, so you can see it now. It occurs on day 15 of every two months, effective from this day to this date, and my time and duration are still fine. Okay, so nothing uh, big there, right? So uh, let's take this now to yearly, okay? So we go to yearly. So we want it to start, you know, on the same, uh, you know, start date the day of the month yes is useful here so what you're saying here is that it's going to occur you know on the 15th of april every here now what does this mean does it mean every two years now that you've set your interval to two this is something you're going to notice i'm going to run it this way so you can see that it does throw up an error so we can start to understand this a little more okay so i'm going to run this so you can see that it has an error and I do debug and it comes to interval. If you hover over interval, you will see that the default it's giving you there is what is 12. Okay. So what happens is that for the yearly, it doesn't accept any number less than 12. So when you say 12, because it's now it's counting it in terms of months. When you say 12 here, what you mean is that this should occur, you know, just once because 12 months make a year. So if you want it to occur, like, you know, after every two years, you know, after every three years in your interval, then you set it up as multiples of 12. So this is what I mean. If I set this up now as 24, what I'm saying is that this meeting, even though it's going to occur yearly, but it's not going to occur, you know, um, one year and then occur the next. It's going to occur one year, then after two years. Let's see if that is correct based on what I have done now. 
And don't forget that it's still going to occur on the 15th, right? That's the day of the month where it's going to occur. So let's do a play. Okay, so now you see what it says. Occurs every two years. The two here, because the interval I did was 24, which is in terms of months. 24 divided by 12 is 2, and it's going to occur on the 15th. You know, and this is the start, this is the end, this is the time. If you go to edit occurrence, you kind of see what has been set up. Reoccur every two years, okay, on April 15th, you know, and it then um, sets up, you know, uh, when it starts, when it ends, maybe based on the number of occurrences. Or like I said, you could also use pattern end date and it also sets up, you know, uh, the time. So that's how this works. Okay, so what we could also try to do is, what if we want to set it up not to occur, uh, uh, I would say, in April, because that seems like, you know, the default for now. Um, what I found that works is really to just change the pattern start date, and based on that, it then honors it going forward. So if I want this to occur, say, 15th of May, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my pattern start date rather than foil it. I'm going to use 5, which would mean me, and this way is going to occur, um, not yearly now, of course, every two years on the 15th of May. So let's see if that's well what it shows up. Uh, yes. So it says, of course, every two years on May 15th, effective from the 11th of May all the way, and the time and dates are all the same. Okay, so... That's fine. So now let's go into something more interesting, which is where we now talk about things that occur maybe on the end Tuesday, end Saturday, or end Monday of you know a certain month, or and it occurs monthly or yearly. So another recurrence type we have. Let me just delete this so you can see that is we have the month end and we have the year end. Okay, all right. So what this is, is you could have a meeting that occurs maybe, say, on the third Tuesday of every month, okay? So third Tuesday of every month. So how are you going to do that? So let me assume here I'm going to start again from my uh, fourth, so this month. Now, in this case, the day of month, as in it's not needed, right? Because it is third Tuesday. So if it's the third Tuesday, it means that we cannot fix a day because the third Tuesday may happen on different days. I hope you get that. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to use my day of week mask, first of all. So let me just say I want this to happen on Tuesday. Okay, so this is going to happen on Tuesday. I don't need my day of month now. Now, how does it know, okay, fine, if it's first, second, or third, you have a property which we've not used so far, and it's called the instance. So this instance property is only used when you are having a recurrence of month end or year end, because that's only when you need it. So we will just do instance, and here I'm going to do instance as three. So what this means is it's going to occur on the third, you know, Tuesday, of every month now the interval now you know was coming from a year interval so if i put this interval as one it means it will occur every month if i put this interval as two let me interpret this so i will see if that's correct at the end of the day what this means is that this meeting is going to occur on the third tuesday right every two months so every two months on the third tuesday this meeting is going to occur and it's going to have 50 occurrences so it's going to occur 50 times okay so let's run this and see what this looks like okay so it occurs on the third tuesday of every two months effective from this date all the way to this date the time and date are you know are same so that's that in a nutshell the last one really just to wrap it all up, is just the year end. Okay, so this one is saying this is going to reoccur, you know, maybe on a certain maybe day in a month, but instead of occurring monthly, it's going to occur yearly. So let's still work with the same thing. Let's assume that um, this, for example, is going to occur. We could say it occurs on, we could specify maybe a day in this case, I'm thinking. Or we could also specify maybe the day of week mask. If we do the day of week mask and say 
it occurs on the 3rd Tuesday. The interval, of course, because it's a yearly thing now, your interval has to be in multiples of 12. So if I say 24, what this is going to mean is that it's going to occur still on the 3rd Tuesday, right? But this is going to occur every two years. That's what should happen. Let's see. Do a play. Okay, so it's going to occur every two years on the 3rd Tuesday of what? Of April. So that's how this is going to work on the third Tuesday of April. Every two years, that's when this meeting is going to reoccur. So the month ends and the year ends, you know, are needed when you are looking at, you know, the end instance, meaning like, okay, if a meeting occurs third Thursday, fourth, um, you know, Friday, then it depends if it's monthly or yearly, then you can then set it up using the year end or the month end. So what you see throughout this video is that. The properties, you know, vary depending on the recurrence pattern that you've chosen, you know, to go with. So it's really, really up to you. And I think the more you play around, the more you get, you know, familiar with how it works. So don't forget, like I said, on the start date, end date and occurrences. If you don't like the idea of using occurrences, you can just take out occurrences and use an end date. It means it's going to clip it to that you know, end date. But once you set the occurrence, you've invariably set up, you know, the pattern end date. So you don't, you know, use the three of them together. The order in which you also put some of these things matters too, especially in cases where one overrides the other. So if I'm putting occurrences first, it could put the occurrence. If I then put pattern end date, the pattern end date will override the occurrence. And the reverse, you know, or converse is also true. So it's either you avoid those redundancies or, you know, you put them in the right order in the event that you actually want to use one and, you know, omit the other. So I hope this has been very insightful for you in seeing how to, you know, set up meetings in, um, you know, in Microsoft Outlook and how to add, you know, recurrence patterns to, you know, this meeting invites. I stayed away from doing a dot send. I just did a dot display so that you could see, um, you know, what it shows up first of all. And then hopefully that translates to what it sends. We could have another video and explore if what it sends is actually exactly, you know, what you have displayed in that dialogue. But I think the more you play around, the more familiar you become with this. So if you like this video, you can hit this like button. You can also share, you know, recommend the video. And uh, most importantly, you should subscribe to the channel Excel Moments for more awesome. I know you agree with me for more awesome content like this. So for now, I'm out.